Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again for yet another X-Men video, and today, very excited, we're going to be checking out the brand new Mondo 1-6 scale, straight from their X-Men, the animated series line, Wolverine's Nemesis, Sabretooth, good old Graydon Creed Sr. Watch the X-Men, the animated series, you'll understand the comics, two animated series differences, but the box is enormous. It's huge. It's like stupid huge, but it's very cool nonetheless. Now, I really like that it has that little opening flap on the front. Gives you a little write-up by Eric Leewald and Julia Leewald, and you get to see all the different hands and accessories. The sides of the box, 1-6 scale, X-Men the Animated Series logo, you get the idea. The backside is very cool, though, and I really appreciate this type of packaging because if you want to display it as such... It's beautiful to look at. It's all the old storyboards reprinted onto the box. And I totally dig that right there, right? It's October 1994. Here's everyone involved with the creation of this figure, so thank you very much for that. This is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new Mondo 1-6 scale X-Men, the animated series, Sabertooth! And while I got all you muty lovers here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube videos. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. Guarantee you'll find something here that you like. We talk a lot about Spider-Man the Animated Series too. The whole Fox Kids Saturday morning lineup, I'm just going to say. Now, before we get started, I want to say that he was packed very nicely. He's got his own little clamshell. There are multiple accessories if you get the timed edition. If you get the standard edition, you get different accessories. We'll go through them. It'll make it all easy to understand. So here's everything out of the packaging for the timed variant exclusive, right? So you got hands on one side. You got show-specific accessories on the other. This is going to be fun. Hope you guys got the X-Men the Animated Series show queued up on Disney+, Plus because we got some alt hands. Now, these are standard issue hands. Whichever figure you get, you'll get these specific hands. So you got some very dramatic clawy hands. Those are nice. You also have some expressive clawy hands, right? Those are nice as well. And you have some fisted hands. All of them have that really cool cell shading. Now, the trigger finger hands are on the timed edition those are going to be exclusive to that only because then you need him to hold the timed edition exclusive for Weapon X Lies and Videotape, which is Maverick's gun. So that is very cool to see. I'm a huge fan of when they put show specific things into any action figure box. And Mondo consistently shows me that they watch the show. They know what accessories to include for a character like Sabretooth. There's not many, I'm just gonna say. They did a good job at kinda pulling something out. But the trigger figure hands, along with the gun, fit beautifully. They look spectacular. Now, from the episode, <laughs> Beyond Good and Evil Part 3 from Season 4, you got the whole Hannibal Lecter mask for Sabretooth. Again, this is a timed edition accessory, but it's very malleable, very gummy. It slides over either the smiling head or the snarling head for old Sabretooth. And I gotta say, definitely looks good on either head portrait. Totally random accessory, but one that's definitely befitting of Sabretooth. Now to head back over to Season 4 again for Weapon X Lies and Videotape, which is just... An amazing episode, beautifully animated by the way. You have the severed head of Talos, the Talos robot that wants to bring all the Weapon X crew back in for reprogramming, but they're not having it. And finally Maverick throws a bomb into the little opening that Wolverine created and blows the robot apart. Mondo knows how to do cell shading. NECA Toys knows how to do cell shading. We're still waiting on other companies to catch up, but the attention to detail is there right down to the severed neck wires. It's beautifully rendered, sculpted beautifully. And if you're wondering if Sabretooth holds it well, he does, and he's totally stoked because he has a brand new ashtray. Now, to head over to Season 1, Episode 6 for Cold Vengeance, which again is an amazing episode, nice brawler episode between Sabretooth and Wolverine, you get Sabretooth's bomb. And this, again, to kind of pull out something, something that Sabretooth does... Something that he would have an accessory, 
it works. It totally does. You're going to also need a remote control. Again, from the same episode. Now, a little bit of a different scenario. This isn't necessarily the remote that he uses for that specific bomb, if you watch the episode. But it's nicely detailed, nicely rendered. Looks like an old Nintendo controller if you turn to the side, right? Little buttons on top. You're not going to have to worry about the antenna. It's gummy enough. Just don't bend it all the way, right? It'll work with you, but just be careful with it nonetheless. And if you want to utilize the trigger finger hands or the C-grip hands, he'll really be able to hold that remote in a nice naturalistic way. So definitely appreciate those very cool accessories. And you also get an alternate smiling snarky head for Sabretooth. He's gloating about something. That's this head. He's, he's monologuing a little bit to Wolverine about his revenge and whatnot. Beautifully painted, fits right onto the neck peg. It's a nice standard looking head portrait for those of you who got the standard edition. It works really well. Now the alternate timed edition accessory hails from season four, episode 14, Bloodlines, when Sabretooth attacks his son, Graydon Creed Jr. Now, I'll tell you this, is it X-Men the Animated Series accurate? Kinda sorta. This is when he looks more humanistic, but still has his massive Sabretooth body, which again, if you watch X-Men the Animated Series, Sabretooth and how his costume slash body works kind of goes back and forth. Is he wearing gloves? Is he wearing boots? Is he wearing a bodysuit? No one really knows. The head portrait works, but again, it's not entirely visually animation accurate. And of course, straight from X-Men the Animated Series, Season 1, Episode 1, Night of the Sentinels, Part 1, the very first mutant we are ever introduced to, why it's none other than Sabretooth. And I gotta give it to Mondo. They have fully realized this figure. Straight from what you see, as the animated series to now plastic action figure on your shelf. It's beautiful. They absolutely nailed it. And I can finally tell you that his big old yellow mane is actually armpit hair. It's confirmed through this figure, right? It stems right there from <laughs> under his arms and wraps all the way to the back. But look at the musculature, the cell shading. Everything looks great. I'll tell you, I'm not exactly a huge fan of the whole crotch pockets, right? That little area right there not always looks the best McFarlane toys has that same problem down to the knees down to the feet again the paint excels everything looks great it makes his figure pop from any angle it's not like a one-sided cell shaded job right the hands are very cool again you can swap all those out where I think if anything needs to be worked on is right here in matching up the articulation plastic pieces with the rest of the figure it is off in color, as you can clearly see. You know the designated points. Is it a huge deal breaker? No, because they still put little hatch marks in there to kind of help without breaking it up too much. They did it fine in the knees. They did it fine in the lower half again with the feet and whatnot. But right there at the arms, if you had to make a change, if I had to nitpick anything, I would say work on that piece because it's just very eye-catching when you look around and really want to look at the actual character. The backside kinda sorta has that same situation, albeit not as noticeable, we'll just say also because it's on the back. But again, his big old yellowish mane has a little bit of cell shading underneath, a little bit of orange to bring it out. But I appreciate the fact that, and I would expect, right, especially the price point, that the paint wraps all the way around. Even his little elbow things, right? They're not a hard plastic. They're a little bit of a rubbery gummy plastic. So you don't have to worry about knocking those and snapping them off. The articulation is not something that is mind blowing for Mondo. Just because it's expensive doesn't mean it has to have 50,000 points of articulation. It does enough to, if you want to display these figures in some sort of pose from X-Men the Animated Series, you can do that. The arms are very sturdy. They go out, they go up, they go down. It's nice. Now, do I need a bicep swivel? Not when I have the rotating elbow. I think that it breaks it up too much. I'd rather have attention to detail and a really cool paint job than breaking up a sculpt with too much articulation. But you may disagree, and that's totally fine. And again, just in kind of showing you, right, you can really see the parts that don't match up with the rest of the paint job, right? Again, just to point that out, something to work on. The hands look great, the cell shading, the black, it's all perfect. 
right? I really appreciate that. He does have a really nice ab crunch, and I'm happy to say there's no looseness in it. Last couple of figures we've looked at recently, can't really do much with it. This is fine, except in the waist. The waist on mine does not want to turn. Let me know down in the comments if yours works, but not getting much movement at all in the waist, even though it seems like it would turn. Now, in moving out the legs, they will only kick out so high. You can kind of rotate them out at the crotch and you get a little bit higher momentum. He has double jointed knees, which look really good. You can kind of get him in a seated position if you wanted to go that route. They're nice and sturdy. The feet are actually really nice as well. They'll rotate up and down and they will go side to side. And they're also ratcheted, which I'm gonna point this out. This Sabretooth figure is very top heavy. He's a very heavy action figure and you're gonna need some sturdy legs. The one thing I found though, is that sometimes he'll wanna go forward. They're not loose, but they're not super, super tight. So just keep an eye on that, more so falling forward than ever falling backwards. However, there is a quick fix to that as Mondo includes a stand for your Sabretooth. They've kind of changed the way they do the stands, but you get a nice doll stand regardless and it should keep him relatively sturdy. At least that's what I found on mine. So if you hook him up to this stand, Realistically, you should have no problems. It kept mine nice and sturdy. He is sturdy without it, but you have two options here. Either take the chance and have him fall over or utilize said stand. And if you're wondering how he size compares to other Mondo 1-6 X-Men animated releases, well, here he is next to Jubilee. Now, I do have Wolverine. I have the special edition where he's laying in the bed looking at the whole frame. I don't want to open that up. I want to keep it like that. I kind of like it. So there you go. I think that these two work really well together. You can utilize your Marvel Legends cel-shaded Wolverine as well. And that'll give you a better idea about how enormous this saber tooth is. But I'll tell you all day, Mondo has nailed the look of X-Men the Animated Series. So that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new Mondo Toys 1-6 scale from their X-Men the Animated Series line, Graydon Creed Sr. Sabretooth. The hands are great. The colors are great. They nailed the cell shading. I'll tell you again, the alternate parts and pieces for the timed exclusive are not going to be overly detrimental to your collection if you don't have them. The standard release is just fine if you're just a huge fan of X-Men the Animated Series. And again, those specific episodes, sure, it might be something you'd like, but I think there's enough in the box to keep you satisfied. And really, how often do you use these extra pieces, right? Kind of goes hand in hand sometimes. More than often than not, you'll probably get them out of the box and looking just like this. But as always, you've heard my thoughts and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything X-Men the Animated Series. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, keep on bringing on X-Men the Animated Series. And heck, you know what? Let's get some Spider-Man the Animated Series as well. Oh, they already uh, showed those off. More on that later. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.